Okay, Attorney Steve Vonner, Foreclosure Warrior. One thing I left out on the retainers we were talking about, I just want to make sure I get that in here, is typically the other thing that I would do in a retainer agreement is to add a successful litigation fee, um, you know, flat dollar amount, five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, whatever the case may be, <clears throat> in the event you bring home a successful conclusion to the case. Okay, so that's just one thing I wanted to point out. All right. This video module is going to be talking about the TRO injunction process. Again, as in the world of foreclosure defense, you're going to get clients coming to you a day before a sale, uh, two days before a sale, after the sale, whatever. Um, and you need to be, <clears throat> my recommendation is to never take a client unless you have at least a week window, because I know there's a lot of things you're going to have to do. And I've laid some of these things out here for you. It's not a simple process of just showing up one day at the court saying, I need a TRO. They're going to sell the house. They have no grounds. You have a, a process that needs to be followed. There's a lot of little bits and pieces that you need to keep in mind. So let's go over that real quick. Again, try to give yourself a little window before you take a case. If you've really got it down, I uh, know what you're doing. You know, maybe you can do it on a day's notice, two days notice. Um, that's a possibility, but you know, at some point their stress is going to become your stress and you need to think about whether it's going to be worth it to take on that stress. <clears throat> anyway, let's assume that you are going to do it. Uh, here's the process. First thing, uh, usually it's ex parte TRO. You're going to file, you, you want to go into the court on two days notice and go in and argue for the injunction, you know, arguing some of the uh, cases that we talked about, some of, the, some of the causes of action, some of the grounds why the sale should be enjoined. You got to go try to give notice to the other party. Now, um, the other, other parties, you know, the trustee, securitized loan trust, loan servicer, typically those are the parties that may have an interest in you trying to stop a sale or reverse a sale or whatever. So those parties are going to be on there. You got to make steps to contact them. Some judges that I've seen have, have been relaxed on this. And I've seen other judges say, you know, show me some real reasonable diligence. You're, you're, you know, I need this, I need that, I need this. Calls, emails, faxes. I was like, wow, really? So one time I actually had to run around, uh, you know, get out of the court, go, go back to the thing and make all these diligent attempts, you know, fax, calls, emails. And so what I learned was just do it in advance on every case. It'll take a lot of stress out of it. Um, try to call, try to call them, call this, this number, that number. Uh, fax letters here and there so that when you do your declaration as an attorney you have to add a declaration to your TRO application that declaration is going to reflect all those diligent efforts you did that way when the judge sees it if you get one of those really stickler judges you know you're gonna say look at my declaration I, I did you know heck of a good attempt to try to notify them now the rule is you need to try to notify them no later and 10, 10 a.m. the day before. Uh, there are some exceptions. It's of an absolute emergency, and you can put in your declaration what the emergency is. Um, then hopefully you can get by on that without a whole lot of notice. I try to give 24, 48 hour notice. What I'm saying is I try to get these cases as early as I can and, and try to go through these process so you're not racing at the last minute. There's nothing worse than racing around. Believe me, I've done it. It's not fun, and um, you wanna try to avoid that. But give a good effort to give notice of your ex parte TRO, and you're going to be filing a Liz Pendens. In most cases, if you're challenging title or possession to property, you're going to be filing a Liz Pendens. So I give notice of that up front. This is what I'm going to do. Any last minute efforts to resolve, give me a call. Otherwise, this is what we're doing. This is where we're going. This is, and it's up to you. If you want to put in there why you're doing what you're doing, that's up to you. Personal call. Um, me you know, I might drop some hints as to what we're doing um, in, in an efforts to try to get some, get someone to the table. <clears throat> but the next, so you'd give the notice. The next thing is the actual drafting of the TRO application and the order to show cause. And the order to show cause is regarding a preliminary injunction, why the court should not issue a preliminary injunction. This is an application. It takes time to do um, you know, there's certain procedural rules um, stating the order to show cause before the TRO. Um, you need a proposed order. You need a declaration for yourself, a declaration of your client. 
Um, if you're going to do a request for judicial notice, which is probably something if you're using chain of title documents to support your argument, like the substitution of trustee document, you want to get a certified copy from the county recorder or have your client go to the county recorder and get you a certified copy. Okay, That's why having a little bit of time before the, the sale date, that's what you want. You want to have a little bit of time. So get that certified copy of whatever you're going to be using. Put that in your attachment for request for judicial notice. And then you got a nice application to submit to the court along with your complaint, your predatory lending complaint. These two have to get filed with the court. This is the bulk of your work right here. You know, you have to put together a nice complaint. You have to do a nice TRO order to show cause application with declarations and proposed order, request for judicial notice. This is a big deal. It takes a lot of time. Okay, this is why these are expensive. Some clients don't understand. You mean 7,500, how on earth, why are you charging? That's, that's crazy. I say, well, what's crazy is all the stuff I have to do. I'm doing this, which if you're gonna be diligent, that's gonna take time. This is a, a, probably a full day deal. That might be a full day deal. So, you know, you have a lot of time uh, that you have to put into this. The TRO application, essentially you have to show the four factors on why you're entitled to a, an injunction, a TRO. Likelihood of success on the merits being the big one. That's what the judges want to know. What, you know. what grounds are you asserting? Why are you likely to succeed? And why should I grant this injunction? Uh, the balance of the hardships is another one. Um, irreparable harm. You have, to, you have to allege it. You have to put it out there. Uh, balance of hardships favors it. And um, you know, it's in the best interests um, you know, that the injunction be granted in interests of equity and whatnot. So, and you have to put all your memorandum of points and authorities when you're talking about likelihood of success on the merits, you got to go put your points and authority on your tiller rescission, on your HAMP fraud, on this, that, and the other. You have to go and show, show all these things, show how the, the default was cured or show how there's no valid deed of trust, that it was void by operational law. You got to lay all that out with the cases. Big time consumers right here. It's got to be done. And again, you want to do a nice complaint. Hopefully they won't demur or motion to dismiss. Probably they will regardless of what you do. But um, get those in there. And then, of course, these are typically filed on the same day. And you typically argue it on the same day. Now, before I do anything, I probably should have put it up there. Before the notice, the first thing I do is I call the court. Uh, that should definitely go up here. Okay. You got to put that in first. Call the court. Find out what days they have the TRO, what judge hears the TRO, if there's any special procedures you need to be aware of, what department is it in. These are things you're going to need to actually give the notice. Okay, The notice must include where, when, who, this and that, and who's going to hear the case. And that, you know, that's the notice they're entitled to as a matter of due process. So get that in, call the court, find out where, how, and what their, what their procedures are. It may be on Monday through Friday uh, that they hear these, but it may also be, you know, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. I don't know, but uh, check. You don't want to you don't want to show up, do all this filing the day before, and then find out. Well, Friday they don't hear TROs. Need to check on that. Call the court. Call court. Very, very, very important first step. Okay. So. You get down here, you got this, boom. Typically, you're going to argue it the same day. Typically, they're not going to show up at the TRO. And you're, if you have good grounds and you've done all this right, and you've, you've, like I said, you've got a good case with good grounds, you should get your TRO. Okay. Now, normally when it comes to a TRO, there's no discussion of a bond or anything like that. Um, you just go about your merry way. The judge fills out the order to show cause that you've given him here him or her, you've given to fill out and that order show cause needs to be served on the other party so they know when they have to respond, when they have to appear, this, that, and the other. The order to show cause is going to set all that out for the defendants, okay? So you do your argument, typically you may be looking five, you know, five minutes. Sometimes you don't even argue it, by the way. Sometimes a judge will review it in chambers and it'll just be granted, which is nice. But um, sometimes you have to argue it. So um, that's why you get paid the big bucks. Um, after that, you want to make sure, make sure you're filing your Liz pendants. Again, that's a document you have to prepare. And our Foreclosure Warrior members, Platinum members, 
we give you these documents, these documents, the, the whole, the notice, the TRO, the complaint, Liz Pendens. We give you those tools. If you don't have them, they're at your disposal. Um, but Liz Pendens, you're going to need to prepare that, file that. That gets recorded with the county recorder where the property lies in any county and every county in which the property lies. And you get that filed so that nobody can go. I mean, they could still go. It doesn't, it doesn't prevent any third parties from buying it, but it pretty much deters them because the, the, the title is clouded. Okay. And then when you're done with all that, you serve the whole enchilada on all the parties that you're dealing with. Like I said, trustee, securitized loan trustee, a foreclosure trustee, loan servicer, whatever. Serve all your documents. So they'll have notice of the court date, when they have to file a responsive pleading to the, to, the T, to the request for preliminary injunction. And then after all that, of course, you get your court date, come back and you argue for your preliminary injunction. That's when somebody will show up and oppose you almost positively. And this is where the big battle is. If you get the preliminary injunction, you got the property locked up. If you don't, you got nothing but a uh, lawsuit that you're going to deal with and you know you're prob they're probably going to sell the property and try to evict your client and put pressure on them and you're going to have to do some maneuvering after that um, whether you're going to try to consolidate cases or work out a settlement some people want to basically bail after this process they go well, if i don't get the preliminary injunction and they're going to evict me you know then the judge judge doesn't like my case or whatever not necessarily true but it is it would be the judge saying I don't believe you're likely to succeed on the merits of your case, which you know may not be the best indicator that you could get. But that's how that goes down. If you get the preliminary injunction, typically they are supposed to, by law, impose a bond requirement. Um, but bear this in mind, they don't always do that. They don't always ask for it. The, sometimes the judge doesn't bring it up. Sometimes the other party doesn't bring it up. Don't put your foot in your mouth and be the first person to volunteer. Oh, by the way, I think there should be a bond posted here. Let somebody else bring that up. That's not your job. If it's required, then somebody else can bring that up and say it's required. Um, like I said, I don't think there's any inherent problems with that. Uh, if you want to bring it up, uh, be my guest, like I said. But if they're not bringing it up, because that could pose a problem. If you're in, this is again, something from the outset in the retainer, something that you need to address is, you know, if you have to post a bond, I'm going to argue for a thousand dollar bond. They may be arguing for a hundred thousand dollar bond. I've seen them argue for a bond for the full amount of the uh, the loan. So you know you have to be prepared that you know they may require a bond as a condition to get this preliminary injunction. At that point, they may be paying the they may be paying you. They may be paying your attorney fees, and so you can see that you know money can become a factor here. So you have to be aware of that. You know the law is that the preliminary injunction won't issue until and unless the bond is posted if a bond's required so that's something that needs to be addressed in advance with your client to say you know we're looking good here but now the judge is going to require you know could require a bond you need to at least you know call a few companies see if anybody posts these civil uh, injunction bonds they're not easy to find i know there's some companies that do it but you know something you need to look into so again have this on the radar but typically that's the process that you think about. And uh, this is what we're looking at to try to stop a sale, lock up the property, give notice to the other party, start the litigation process. And then from there, where the case goes is, uh, is up to you and, and your pleadings. And you'll probably be looking at some demurs. You'll probably have um, you know, some discovery you're gonna wanna get out so you can get some answers. But that's the uh, general TRO injunction process in California. And again, Attorney Platinum members have access to the materials. If you haven't done one of these, trust me, it's nice to have these materials at your, at your ready to take your first case. So um, that's it. Thank you.